brought to you by Best Movie Ratings. Best Movie Ratings is a one-stop, easy and elegant movie ratings experience. Stop wasting your time on bad movies and download the world's best movie ratings app from the iTunes App Store now. Hi everyone, this is Ahmed Karimli and welcome to Be Efficient TV. The mission of this web TV show is to boost the efficiency of your business and life through tips and tricks from leading experts. And today I have with me Walid Al-Bashir. He is the founder and CEO of Stationery.ae. Welcome to the show, Walid. Hi, welcome, Ahmad. Thanks for hosting me in the show today. It's my pleasure. What's your background and uh, how did you go to like end up in India and different countries through your startups? You, you have started so many different startups. Uh, so tell us, let's start with your background and then we'll go one by one. Right. Okay. Uh, w- once we, we finish the 12 standards, I mean, we uh, we walk a bit for around uh, uh, six months, and then uh, it's the time to go to universities. And I've got a cousin in uh, India who have suggested that okay, there's some uh, uh, the place is good and all this stuff, and then I ended up there. So, so you, uh, you learn yeah, the language went, or no? Uh, yeah, uh, I speak audio uh, quite, quite fair. Okay, and then you started there an internet company, internet service company. Or something? Actually, it's an interesting story. You know, uh, I went there to do a geographic information system course, and then by the time we uh, we were due to graduate, it was 1995. Uh, that time there was uh, it was like downtime in terms of the oil and gas and all other fields which we were targeting uh, to get employed on. And um, once, uh, well, one day I was uh, I was taking uh, coffee with a friend of mine, and he asked me to check something called the internet. So uh, I decided next day to go. He explained one place in that city uh, uh, that uh, internet is being served, and uh, I went there. I spent almost uh, a quarter of my monthly salary of an hour in the internet. You know. And uh, and uh, uh, I checked there was Alta Vista that time, and then uh, went in, searched on a couple of stuff with the assistant of the guys. There. It was in one of the uh, technology institutes, and then uh, I fell in love with it. And that was in India, and you were employed. What you were doing there? No, no, we we're in India. I was just uh, I was uh, I was in last year in college. Okay. And then yes. you you started an internet cafe there, and then you sold the business, and and you moved to Oman or where? Yes, it was it was it was like a trend, you know. So after some time, we started streamlining everywhere. So we got uh, me and a bunch of friends um, uh, with some uh, with some Indian bot, you know. We said, okay, uh, as foreigners in India, you know, uh, India uh, everything closes uh, a bit early, like by eight o'clock, you know, everywhere is closed. So for the foreigners, you know, they they keep loitering around, you know, from a place to another. So uh, we, we thought of this idea of putting up the place in which uh, uh, foreigners can come hang around and then also many of them they had relatives in uh, Europe and, and, and GCC and the uh, United States so they could communicate with them. And it turns out to be uh, like um, a hang up place, you know, it was, uh, it was a place uh, where people come and go and all, it was 24 hours uh, place. Uh, it was good, yeah. Then you moved to Oman or Dubai, you worked in tourism. Tell yeah, us about uh, that. Actually, yeah. after that, uh, after that, by uh, 98, um, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm done with everything. And then also the internet stuff started to be very much uh, available. So it hasn't been much rec- lucrative by that time. Uh, so uh, I came over, I joined the founding team of uh, a startup in Oman called City Show which was one of the first online uh, uh, listing directories in the region here. And uh, uh, we started working on the stuff for almost uh, two years. It has been very successful, uh, you know. Uh, then uh, by 2000, you know, we get those issues of the downtown and all this stuff. Then I moved to Dubai by that time. So listing, it was like you list details of companies and you sell advertisements or how it work? It, exactly. It was just simple listing. You know, you get your company name, you get your phone, fax, and a small intro about the company. Uh, there were not so many emails by that time uh, used by companies. And then we charged them, uh, I think it was a $1,000 uh, a year. Uh, yeah, and people were doing it. 
and then you sold the business and moved to be employed as the head of e-department, e-business at Charge Commerce and Tourism Development Authority? Yeah, yes, actually we folded it. Uh, we, 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 haven't, we haven't solved it. We folded it. Uh, uh, during 2000, you know, there was this internet issue, the first bust of the boom and, and all this stuff. So we ended up uh, uh, folding the company. And uh, I, I came to join uh, Charge Commerce and Tourism uh, to lead the e-business section. And that time, uh, Sharjah Commerce had one of the earliest online presence in the region. They had the, they had websites and, 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 and a portal that uh, was built 1997. So I started with them. We started on a couple of innovative projects uh, over there, uh, trying to bring innovation within the the, the Odrat itself. And it has been great, yeah. It, uh, we've got some uh, significant uh, uh, contribution towards uh, innovation in there. So there were uh, there were a couple of pro uh, projects which were really good. Um, uh, we identified at a point of time that uh, most of the images that used for uh, about Sharjah in any of the on, on of the media, uh, it's two or three images. So what we what we have done, we started having an online image uh, uh, directory. Uh, which we, we we started shooting, you know, images around the city from different places and all this, and then uh, putting it online as a service uh, for media, for uh, agencies and all, and it has helped change the image of the of the of the of the image uh, to a very be a better image, a very nice image. Yeah. At the same time, while you are employed in 2004, you started something in seashells. Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, we were we were employed during the Sharjah tourism, and uh, Social is an offshore company because we used to get a lot of requests for advising on hosting, you know, uh, advising on uh, because by that time so many uh, very very many people are working in this field, so uh, we get advices uh, uh, requests by friends by people around or, uh, about we want to put a website where can we host it, you know, how how can we do that, so. Uh, we 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 got I got I established the seashell company as an offshore company just to uh, to to serve this uh, purpose. Yeah. So it's like a web development. You registered it in seashell. No, basically we were selling hosting. Uh, we were selling hosting, so we lease uh, servers, you know, and then we retail them. But uh, if it's like to individual customers or friends, why you need to? Incorporate it, start, it started like that, but after some time it has been mainstream. I mean, it has been for three, four years. Uh, we've been serving hundreds of clients. Okay, so you wanted to register somewhere. Yeah, exactly. And again, in 2006 also you co-founded uh, Formula World Sport. Tell us about this company. What's yeah, the services uh, that you used to provide? Actually, while we were while, while we were in the, the Sharjah Tourism Development, we used to organize those boat races, uh, the Formula One boat races. And the team was a small team. So uh, uh, we, we learned about the process of, you know, uh, getting uh, an, any sport event, marketing it and all this stuff. And then uh, we started with another uh, local guy who was uh, a promoter into uh, in, 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 in this sport uh, we started organizing races in rural places like uh, like um, uh, like Deba and other places and it went well the next step we went uh, streamlined through uh, like uh, UAE uh, we, we organized races in Abu Dhabi we organized races in uh, in Sharjah itself in other places uh, we went ahead we organized in Doha, in Jeddah, in Kuwait, Bahrain, and by 2007, we were awarded the exclusive promotorship for 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 UAM F2 class, particularly uh, for the World Championship. So, how uh, many people we, were like running this company, and uh, what happened to it later? Okay, we were about uh, five people in the uh, executive team, uh, but again, uh, the company, like the, the people who uh, who contribute on delivering the show, they're about 200 people. Uh, many of them are the pilots uh, uh, along with their teams, so one one pilot, co-pilot and mechanic and also... But how do you make money? Like you, you are organize the event and you make money from the government or the people who's organizing the event and they, you are just like an event company, take specific fee for the event or, or you get like, you know, money from sponsors and these things? Basically, we contract, let's see, we contract 18 drivers. 
uh, with their teams and, and everybody. We contract a rescue team. Uh, we contract uh, uh, like media companies. So we get the whole show elements together. We package it together and we go and sell it to tourism departments, uh, to lo local uh, organizers. Uh, we get a sponsorship from other companies. Uh, and uh, the main objective of that is to promote that specific city or that specific place. And that's really worked uh, well. So it's mainly kind of a show more than like a professional competition in the world ranking or something. No, no, it, it is. It is a it is a professional competition. It uh, it's uh, under the, uh, the 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 UIM, the International Federation of uh, of uh, Power Sports uh, uh, of water uh, sports. Uh, but again, uh, it has a lot of added value into uh, attracting tourism. You know, attracting uh, media to that specific city. And then, well, why did you leave this uh, interesting? It's, it's, it's very interesting, but again, it's uh, it's it's a very it's a, it's a luxury product, you know. So uh, we tried to push it uh, in end of 2008 and uh, beginning of 2009. Uh, we tried to push it as regular, like normally we used to organize between seven to ten races uh, every year. Uh, but uh, um, it, it was very difficult, you know, during the economic crisis, like most of the sponsorship uh, budget has been drained off, you know. People were not in the mood to accept something as luxurious as that. Meanwhile, we had, uh, we had events in 2008 before the crisis like in Jeddah and in Kota Kanibalu in, uh, in Malaysia, which were great success. They were, they were very, very successful uh, uh, events, yeah. Then you stopped so doing anything related to this company or you st it's still like you still now can gather we the just, team and we make... Just fold, we, just folded, we just folded the activities of the companies, waiting for the right time. Perhaps uh, things will get better. I keep discussing with uh, uh, with, uh, with, uh, with my partner mm -hmm. regarding that. Shall we go back and all this? But still, we don't feel that uh, the situation is, uh, is, is favorable. How long it takes usually the process to pitch those, uh, let's say, governmental institutes for, for such an event? Okay. Basically, we spot specific uh, uh, parties who are interested uh, from specific cities, and normally we take them along with us uh, to events. So basically, uh, in every event, you find like four or five of the potential local organizers of the of the future events. So those people they come with us, uh, they see the event live, and then they uh, they get to know about the details and the requirement, and also they feel more uh, comfortable to hosting the events. Uh, many of them they have made a lot of money. I mean, many of them uh, they pay the loyalty for the event and the other expenses, and uh, so many of them they've made uh, many falls uh, as profit. You know? And uh, you pitch the sponsors, or they do. You just sell them the event, and they do pitch we, the sponsors. We, we have we have a global sponsor. We have a global sponsor, like we had the uh, we had the Khrafi Group as a global sponsor uh, at the time. Uh, we had uh, uh, other local companies, like uh, big companies, as a sponsor. Uh, local sponsors move with us in all the all, all the races, all the rounds, but also. The local organizer has the right to have their own local sponsors as well. Like in Gedda, for example, we had uh, we had Mobile, we had Samasco, we had the, the 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 Chamber of Commerce. All of them we had them as, as sponsors. And then uh, you started working as an advisor. You quit the employment life. Why did you quit the employment life? Well, basically, basically, you know, when uh, when when the economic crisis happened, and uh, we had to fold this uh, product, so we started asking, we started looking for alternatives. Uh, in order to at least to buy bus this uh, this time, uh, the, the 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 guys whom I work uh, and advise with, uh, they are very uh, they're very close uh, guys. Uh, the company is owned by the chairman of uh, uh, used to be our chairman in the in the uh, in the uh, Shaja tourism. Uh, they started this investment company, and uh, I do have Emirates a Investments with them, Group, so and there is Emirates another company Group, in yeah. Shaja. Yeah. Inche, yeah. Inche is under Emirates Investment Group, yeah. 
Okay. Yeah. So uh, I came back. I had an advisory role. I used to visit them three, four days a, a week, and uh, and then basically uh, trying to, uh, to 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 overcome the the, the economic crisis. Yeah. Advisor in terms of investments or their ventures or what exactly? No, I was I was in uh, in uh, information management, uh, business performance management, uh, so stuff related to information and business intelligence. Okay, and then the next company was Inbound LLC 2011, or what? So there is something yes, else yes. before it. Yes, I mean Inbound. Inbound was. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, I fell by 2011. I mean, uh, things are getting back on the track. There was a lot of uh, uh, there was a lot of uh, buzz about uh, about digital and, and people moving to digital and all this stuff. So I established Inbound as a digital agency, providing strategy, providing uh, uh, a consultation service to specific clients. And then we had a we we, we, we have a technology lab in there in which we test uh, new technologies. So we worked in M to M. We worked in Internet of Things and some other technologies, and then we 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 qualify uh, if there is a specific uh, uh, product uh, that uh, has been qualified through our uh, lab. Then we try to push it uh, to the market as a product. We've got something called Intrac, uh, which is uh, a complete. Uh, uh, a vehicle and driver uh, management system. Uh, we, we try with that in track is to extend the existing offering of uh, the fleet the fleet management system or uh, or GPS tracking system to extend it into driver behavior management into integrating it with survey with uh, with sensors uh, getting to in vehicle technology because we believe that. The next thing will be the, your vehicle. I mean, uh, it started with your uh, PC or, or laptop, then it went in your mobile, and then uh, your, your, your car is the, the next precious thing that you spend time in. The next thing is the vehicle in terms of what? In terms of like in terms the GPS of the technolo- or technology trend going now, uh, we we uh, we have uh, we have seen that the technology is moving towards the vehicle uh, after your mobile. Technology in terms of what? Still now the vehicles in, have some in, technologies, GPS yes. and stuff. Yes, yes. But in terms of in vehicle technology, I mean, there's a specific there, there, there's specific trend right now uh, regarding in vehicle technology. If you see uh, Tesla and you see all this other innovative stuff, so we're just trying to bring more technology to your vehicle, make the vehicle more smart. You know, so it was it- like just focused on this, or it's a general software company that you do. From web development to developing different uh, softwares, and is it still going on? It's still going on, actually. Uh, normally, we started with the consultation. We do a lot of consultation, but after that, when you have a product and this product start proving itself in the market, then you get to leverage more than the consultation uh, consultation business. So we've got uh, we've got Intrac, which is a product that is uh, uh, that has been there in the market for uh, three years, and we've got very reputed uh, reputed clients uh, that they are using it in uh, UAE, Doha, and Saudi Arabia and Oman. Uh, uh, what 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 was your marketing strategy until now? How did you change it over the years to get more new clients? What do you do? You have a sales team. You do cold calling. You do SEO. What do you do? Okay, basically, I believe into uh, if you if you work uh, with with uh, a few clients, people who knows you, people who understand exactly uh, the value that you are bringing. And then uh, you work relatively on bigger project that will be uh, better than working with several main clients, and then here the overhead will be more and so on. So we've been following up this strategy. Uh, we get recommendation from uh, uh, from uh, from uh, like uh, reputable companies, some uh, some uh, good groups, some government agencies. Uh, we try to make proof of concept for for them, and then uh, once they're satisfied, we we start working. Uh, uh, with them, uh, for example, we work with Arms Group here. Arms Group, uh, they're the owners of the school. We work with uh, uh, we work with Suhail Bahwan uh, Group. Uh, we work in uh, in in Doha. We work with uh, uh, with Qatar Post. We work with Qatar Petroleum. Uh, so uh, we try to bring some innovative products to their existing offering. And here, uh, we, we we get to manage fewer clients, uh, and then also the value we're getting is more. Okay, then you founded the major company that you are now focused on, which is stationary.ae? 
Okay, yeah, uh, stationary, stationary is, uh, is come up from uh, a personal experience, basically. And it's different than any, any other uh, companies uh, that uh, I, have, uh, I have started, uh, because most of these companies are bootstrap company. But uh, uh, this is the first time that we get an investment from the beginning, we get it incubated, we get it accelerated. Uh, as I said, it started all from uh, a version of frustration about, uh, uh, the, 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 about uh, the inconvenience of getting, you know, uh, those stuff, whether for a business person or whether for a student or whether even for a parent of, uh, of, uh, of children in school. Uh, so um, we looked at this and then we say that so you wanted solution. to order the, the story is that you wanted to order something for your uh, daughter and you didn't find online so you started the company it, it, exactly exactly I mean uh, uh, stationary office supply particularly it's a product with so many varieties and then when you're trying to satisfy uh, kids especially you know every one of them ha has a specific thing in mind and then you keep visiting stores then you find you don't find the whole sets you find a part here and a part there so it's a bit a bit of inconvenience so when i reflected this back and i thought of uh, uh, you know using an uh, online system then everything could be convenient conveniently uh, searched for uh, there will be a lot of bank deals and stuff like that plus uh, the schools keep sending every now and then they keep sending uh, almost daily or three four times a week they keep sending requirement so if we get uh, to bundle this requirement from beginning of the year beginning of the semester then we will uh, we will save a lot of time uh, for the parents uh, uh, visiting the store many times and queuing up and barking issues and so how it works it's just like an, a store specialized in stationary products yeah, I mean uh, it's an uh, we we do online only. We do not we do not do a brick and mortar uh, stores. Uh, we've managed to tie up with top tier suppliers, uh, in which uh, we list the products from those top tier suppliers. Uh, we do the marketing for the product, and then uh, uh, we have we have an arrangement regarding the order fulfillment and uh, and, and logistic uh, with the supplier. So once orders are there, uh, then uh, we we dispatch them. Uh, then uh, we, we send them. Who, who's, uh, who do uh, the delivery? Port. Like uh, external, like third party delivery logistics companies or the supplier himself? We, we, we use Aramix right now for delivery, which has been uh, great here. Yeah. Yeah. What's been the name using, of it? We've been using Aramix. Aramix, uh, okay. Yeah, uh, because in order to scale, one of the main uh, issues with most of the brick and mortar stuff is that if you got 20 orders a day or 100 orders a day, uh, that would be still manageable. But again, if you go beyond that, then the scalability of, uh, of delivering those uh, products is a bit an issue. So if a customer orders a pen, one pen, yes. then, then Aramix will deliver one pen or how it works? Yeah, as soon as we, we've got a, a minimum a minimum basket size uh, in terms of uh, uh, to get a free shipping. But uh, if you're willing to pay the shipping fees for even one bin, uh, we do not mind. You see, those couriers companies have been delivering uh, uh, like uh, papers, they've been uh, delivering visas, they've been delivering a lot of documents uh, through um, uh, based on a fees. How much is the cost of delivery for the small uh, packages? Like if okay. I pay, like as a end user pays for the delivery, how much it costs? Okay, it costs minimum 25 dirhams uh, for a delivery. Uh, we're trying to work even a better deal uh, as we go uh, uh, through that. That's why we advise customers is that it will be more convenient if your basket size is 200 to, uh, to 300, 250 to 300 dirham, then here you can have a free, a free shipping. Uh, nevertheless, we can still fulfill it. If you have something particular, we can still fulfill it. That's not a problem. How do you like uh, make the deals with the suppliers? Like, do you stock the items? Do you keep the items with the suppliers and they stock it? Uh, do you buy the items and then sell it on the website? How the concept? No, we, we keep it. We keep it with the suppliers. We have arrangement with them on a specific quarter. Uh, we keep it with the supplier, and then all those will be back to back. But we make sure that the inventory is being uh, updated uh, in a very regular basis. So, uh, because here we don't, we don't, we, we want to avoid uh, an order that's been done uh, while it's run out of stock at the same time. But stationery is a big headache in terms of items. You have like million item maybe. 
So it is, like yeah. you, you be you how you are selective about specific items that they always have stock uh, from these items in order not to be like to have problems with the customers. Yeah, because well, it, I, because I, I, it means that you don't ha you don't have control over the inventory. The supplier maybe he will tell you that you have the inventory, but the reality is he don't. Yeah, it happens. Uh, some cases it happens, but we believe that the variety of the products is uh, is uh, it's a sort of competitive advantage for us uh, because uh, the, uh, the the variety of the products itself make the make the consumer look at uh, online channel as a serious channel. But how did you solve these problems when you had it? Like yes, you, you, now, you kept now, the customer the, the on ideal, hold till you find it or how? The ideal solution is uh, to integrate directly with uh, with ARB or whatever inventory system of the supplier uh, to make sure that you have get, uh, you get in a real time uh, uh, stock update uh, from the supplier. Uh, so here, uh, wherever is mentioned available in, in, in the warehouse, uh, you uh, you offering it. Again, there are some items uh, you find some items that are available, but they are damaged. Or some of, of the items, there's some discrepancy between uh, between the physical products and the listing. But again, it's happened. I mean, it's happened uh, even in staples.com in the big uh, players. It's happened. We just uh, have to do uh, about. Uh, we don't have anything to do about it. Uh, but to try our best in order to make sure that uh, things are set. If a customer asks for something and it's not available with the supplier, even if it's available with other suppliers, I uh, will try to fulfill it because the customer is uh, more important for us. How much is your margins on like the deal that you make with the suppliers? Okay, it depends between 30 to 60 percent uh, the the margin uh, for 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 the suppliers, and uh, again uh, the more you uh, the more uh, you, you you sell, the more you can negotiate a better margin. Yeah. Like you get like a list of different items and you get negotiate one by one because it's a lots of work. I like my father used to be in state like and still working in stationery and I have some background about it. Yes, it's a big headache in terms of items and and uh, and things. Or you just fix specific suppliers to work with. You know, you have to. Uh, uh, what I learned right now over, I think, uh, a year and a half now. Uh, what I learned, you have to pick a, a top tier supplier. Uh, because uh, this is the one who can give you a good margin and who can give you a good availability as well, you know. Uh, those are the two things. But again, uh, the product listing and the product information, it is some of the, is some of the issues that has been uh, facing the retailers to go online uh, and, and, and preventing them from, from going online. Because of so, the number of items. Uh, and, exactly, yeah. because those items, the way they list those items in ERB systems is basically like um, sort of short coding stuff, you know. Uh, so those guys who work on the system, they understand it. But again, if you want to extend your offering to uh, to online consumers, you need to you need to make it ab appealing. You need to you need to have images. You need to have proper naming for the search engines and and stuff like that. Uh, so this is the main issue which uh, uh, which most of the existing retailers, uh, whether in station or, uh, or other products, they are facing in order to go online. How many employees you have to do this listing and to manage the, you know, negotiate and make the, I mean, solve these problems with different suppliers? Okay, we are a team of seven right now, and then uh, for the product information, sometimes we do outsource. I mean, there are specific agencies back in Pakistan and India, so they do by record basis. So you give them like uh, 10,000 records and then they start working on it. Uh, they make sure that uh, the product's uh, naming is uh, based on the standard you, you've uh, kept, uh, the, the, the images based on the quality, and then they revise uh, everything. I'd say it's a bit of a hassle, but again, as I tell you, it's a competitive advantage because this is something that uh, I believe it's not a easy to be copied. Exactly, a barrier to entry for many people. In terms of uh, the suppliers themselves, uh, the market here is a very fragmented market. A very, very fragmented market. Uh, most of the suppliers, they've been doing this for 50 years, for 60 years. So uh, for them, uh, online is not very much appealing to them uh, at this point of time. Yeah, yeah, the stationary traders are way behind in terms of technology. Uh, exactly. I've been in touch with so many. Exactly. Exactly. Comparing exactly. with so many other industries. Exactly, exactly. So we're just trying to disrupt 
the market by offering something that is good on mutual benefit for them also they could start having some uh, uh, some direct um, like uh, uh, valuable direct channel uh, and for us also we can uh, benefit into capturing market share and uh, how much is the the whole let's say the software or the website cost and you developed it your team developed it or you outsource the, the development of it uh, we we developed in-house uh, we we have a very brilliant uh, CTO uh, who has been working in many successful startup here and he's the one who was uh, who, who did everything from scratch uh, we met What's sure his name we, uh, his name is Mohammed okay yeah. Uh, so uh, what we what what we uh, we we have emphasized on from the beginning is that we have to go for something that is solid, uh, because of the number of the SQs, because of the way we we see uh, uh, we could integrate the system later on. Or we want to integrate with ERB with uh, e procurement systems. Uh, uh, this is our next plan. Uh, so uh, we wanted to to rely on something solid. How, how do you are marketing the idea? Like, how do you bring traffic to the site? What do you do? Okay, basically we're focusing on social media great, great deal right now. We've got, a, we've got some good engagement in social media right now. And uh, other, uh, other, uh, other e-marketing like um, bait ad and all, but the, the main focus is on social media right now. Do you know how much is the uh, customer acquisition? How much each customer costs you? Do you spend a lot on P PPC you do, or you do just sometimes even offline marketing or just online you're focused? Okay, customer acquisition, it's, uh, it goes uh, something beyond uh, uh, 5 to $10 uh their their customer but again our customers are classified into their specific customers who are uh who are normally uh retain customers like people who buy let's see there is moleskin there is people who who buy art stuff those are people uh, which we uh, we see the customer lifetime is uh, is, is is longer uh, plus the the retention also is more so for those type of customers we are willing to spend uh, even more uh, more money uh, bbc works but it still is not a main part of our strategy we do a lot of marketing and retargeting right now, uh, so we try we try to to let uh, the, the the users see our products, and then um, uh, based on specific marketing technique, he will get to see those products in social media more frequently. The products which he precisely uh, browse earlier. So we can and say eighty percent you rely and focus on social media in terms of the marketing that works for you. Exactly, and uh, and the twenty percent on other channels. Uh, for SMEs also, and for schools, we have an onboarding strategy in which uh, we get people to uh, to to present the solution for them, getting them on board, and make the first or second order, and then uh, uh, from there they could uh, uh, they could uh, learn how to do it themselves, and then they, they take it ahead. You said like you keep the stock with the with the supplier. So when somebody makes the purchase, then um, he's he's paying the money to you, and then you pay the supplier, right? Based on the agreement yes. with him. So always you collect the money, he sends the the items. And how, yes, how long I mean, you pay uh, the supplier? We, we, we have credit line with the suppliers, so uh, the suppliers we pay them monthly, normally. Uh, again, if the if the if the customer is paying through credit card, yeah, we, we, we get uh, we, we get to block the amount first. But if he's paying with uh, cash and delivery, which is not a favorite uh, uh, approach for myself, but it still is very much necessarily uh, for a stationery. We got we, we got a lot, we got so many orders from like uh, executive secret secretaries, uh, office managers, you know. Uh, receptionist uh, in uh, freezons companies and all this um, it's very difficult to get uh, approvals and and, 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 and 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 use credit cards for those people so here uh, they could order uh, then they pay uh, on delivery uh, Aramix will do the cash and delivery and pay to us after some time yeah. Um, what's the percentage between cash on delivery to credit cards uh, purchases for your customers? Or the re I just want to understand the region. Yeah, 45, 55 or around that, yeah. 45, 55. This is the last benchmark we did. 45 what? 
45 for cash and delivery and, and 55 for so credit still card. Yeah. In which market you still are high. now available? Uh, we're available in UAE uh, right now, and uh, we we planning to start in uh, Saudi Arabia. I've been there last week, and uh, we discussed with uh, with couple of partners, uh, potential partners there. And uh, uh, I believe that the market in UAE is about one billion dollar uh, market. But if you look at places like Saudi Arabia, uh, it's uh, five six times the market over here. Uh, so uh, the 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 plan is uh, within three to four years uh, to cover the whole Middle East and North Africa. Now in Dubai, the market is very diverse in terms of nationalities. Uh, what's the demographics of uh, of the buyers? Like who buys more, the Arabs, uh, Europeans, uh, Indians? Well, uh, still we haven't uh, we haven't started analyzing those uh, those demographics. But I could tell you, like business to business, whether to con- uh, business uh, against consumers or uh, we have uh, based on mainland against the the free zones and stuff like that. But in terms of profiling the the the, the, the consumer demographics, uh, we haven't uh, we haven't done well. I could look at the social media. And then give you an an outline. But we see uh, Arabs leading, then Asian, uh, perhaps, and then European. And uh, in terms of like mainly B two C or B two B, you sell like okay. mainly the companies B2C. buying more than the individuals, or who buys B2C more? B two C is about twenty to thirty percent in terms of the value. B two C is about seventy to eighty percent in uh, in terms of the value. Yeah. How did you raise capital for the company? Uh, okay, we were first selected and accelerated by by us accelerator, uh, which they have been very brave into putting money in just an idea uh, by by that time, and then through went through the incubation process and uh, and uh, we successfully graduate from the from the accelerator. Uh, we, uh, we 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 participated in uh, in uh, beginning of the year. We participated in SME Congress uh, in Abu Dhabi. Uh, we won the first award among uh, like uh, tens of startups, and uh, uh, we started raising uh, money from angel investors, uh, from micro VCs, and uh, and it went well. Uh, it went well. Uh, we're closing an around right now to uh, to enhance our presence in the in the UAE and to capture more market share, uh, and it has been successful. How much is the round now that you are raising in case like one of the audience interested? And okay, for an exchange of how much? Uh, equity? Yeah, we're raising three hundred fifty thousand uh, dollars for around fifteen to twenty percent uh, equity, uh, in which we have uh, several commitments right now. Uh, we we might wrap it up before end of the year. How much you still own of the company? Uh, I own the majority stake. Uh, it's more now. than fifty percent. Uh, yeah, or more than fifty percent of the company. But again, uh, in terms of uh, my main objective is to push the company, uh, uh, make it more successful. You know, make it more uh, uh, more valuable uh, towards other shareholders, towards investors, uh, and so on. Uh, so, uh, as I said, you know, having one percent of a hundred million dollar company is better than having a hundred percent of a uh, hundred thousand of uh, hundred thousand company. You know. Uh, so uh, uh, we're pretty flexible into that, but again, we have to look at the capital requirement along our plan and how we can dilute at any point of time. Which one of your startups you consider the most successful? Uh, most successful is uh, Formula Water Sport, of course. Uh, it has been a global success. Um, it's, a, it's, it's very bitty to, to, to fall such a project. But again, as an entrepreneur, you have to make sure that you have to be real with yourself. You know, if things is not working, you have to keep it aside and then uh, and then move on, move along with your life. Yeah. And uh, like, can you tell us more about this acceleration uh, process uh, with the accelerator or incubator? Like, how much they they invest usually twenty to thirty thousand dollar. They own how much for an exchange of five to ten percent? Tell us more about that. How the process starts, what happens through the process, what the entrepreneur learn. 
Great. Actually, um, um, as I tell you, this is a this is a special experience than other experiences. Most of the other experiences, uh, you and other founders have to do everything by your by yourself. Uh, even if you are very successful, sometimes you don't get the traction that is uh, uh, that is uh, um, the, uh, you deserve. You know, for for your startup, the networking and the contacts and all this stuff. Uh, being a part of accelerator uh, or particularly I three sixty accelerator. Uh, they they invest around thirty thousand dollars for a ten to fifteen percent equity uh, on idea stage. So you just have to come with the idea and a team that is qualified to do the idea, and then they take you through uh, uh, an incubation process of three, an incubation process of three. Uh, 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 then they take you into an incubation process of. Uh, like uh, three stages, uh, three, to, three, three to four, mu- four months, okay. particularly, uh, in which you go into design phase, you go into prototype phase, then you go into uh, commercialization, and uh, basically on the last uh, phase, you start preparing for 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 investment. Okay, uh, the good thing is uh, that being in a co-working space. Uh, you get to know uh, a lot of other fellow entrepreneurs, you get to network with them, you find out what is uh, trends, you find solutions for your issues. Uh, then uh, media keep visiting the place, you know, investors, uh, mentors, and uh, uh, so you get to, the place is, uh, is is basically happening, you know, it has a lot of uh, actions happening uh, over there, uh, which is good. Uh, uh, energy level is uh, very high. Uh, there's great support, and we're glad to see such stuff happening right now in the region. Uh, like uh, we 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 were just by our own for over uh, over the past year. What's the difference between uh, you started at the beginning with I three sixty or Turnate or the Crib as they call it? Uh, what the difference between it and between N five? And now are you based in N five or? Just explain to the audience the difference. Okay, okay. The crib is uh, the crib is uh, is is a co-working space. The crib is a place where those uh, those entrepreneurs work, and and it's a co-working space. Anybody can walk in and hire uh, a seat or a table, and then uh, just network with the others. Um, the i three sixty is the holding company which run the whole show. And they do run also uh, uh, Ternet Accelerator. They do run an accelerator for Khalifa Fund right now. Uh, so uh, as many people know that Ternet is uh, sponsored by BB World. Uh, uh, we are we are not sponsored. I mean, we are not under Ternet. We are sponsored directly from i 3 uh, Accelerator. Uh, the main difference between uh, i 3 or Ternet, again, is in 5 uh, In5, uh, it's a... It's uh, it's a hub in which they give you subsidized rate into uh, forming the incorporating the company. They give you a nice place to uh, to work around and all, but they don't do equity investment in the startups. Uh, in I three sixty internet, so you just pay see, less for the license in Dubai. Uh, yeah, it's a okay. it's a subsidized rate. You get a DIC license, and you get a place. I think it's uh, uh, it's around seven thousand dirhams. Uh, for the first year, if you take a seat, so, so this like, is including the location and the company. Yeah, location and the company. Okay. Uh, so uh, it's it's around it's around that. And then, so, uh, and then after that, uh, you you would have put yourself within a year time whether you want to scale up or you want to still stay minimum. Then after that, you have to move to uh, to to some. Uh, so they give office. you only one year. And it's then you have year. to move uh, out. Exactly, exactly. But I believe uh, within a year, you should figure out. You should have figured out whether this is uh, really gonna work or not. or not. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Tell us more about the legal process of registering a company in, uh, let's say, B- BVI, British Virgin Islands, or this process, which is. So many entrepreneurs here don't understand it. Uh, which legal, do you recommend any legal services to do that? How much it costs? And what okay. is it exactly? What's the difference between this and between, you know, putting, inco- incorporating a company in Dubai? Okay, uh, I think one of the areas that most of the entrepreneurs that uh, fall behind is that getting things uh, uh, in the right uh, way from beginning, you know. 
So many of them, because they are friends or because they have known each other for some time, you know, they do not formalize, you know, you don't find shareholders agreement. Especially in the Arab they, world. <laughs> exactly. You don't find shareholders agreement. You don't find, you know, uh, proper structure and all. Uh, uh, we believe, okay, trust is good. Yeah. But again, this might prevent the company from scaling up, from getting investors moving and all this stuff. So basically the legal and the financial part. Also in the financial part, there are some issues, you know. Uh, like regarding the bookkeeping from day one and stuff like that. I think those are areas uh, uh, we, we all did it at the point of time, you know, started just without counting how much you spend from your bucket or uh, you don't do agreements and all this stuff. And then you you, you regret it because after some time, when money start uh, coming in and all, you have to really get it structured. And it might be very overwhelming to get things on the right uh, on the right track by that time. Uh, the other thing is that from the investor's point of view, they wanted to make sure that they are uh, their uh, liability is being uh, limited. Uh, they can give you the money, but they are not able to take more liability uh, based on your action. Uh, they wanted it to rely on uh, on a jurisdiction that is having a minimum uh, paperwork. You don't have to travel over there uh, in order to incorporate a company. Uh, it's based on on some of the well-known uh, like uh, laws, like the English law. Uh, plus also uh, most uh, most of uh, uh, most of those uh, BVIs they do not re request you for no objection certificates from where where you you work or where you do so it's a, it's a pretty smooth process. Uh, just ex let's explain this to the audience because some people from out outside Dubai they will not get it. You mean okay. that uh, permission in case that they are employed here in certain companies, they will not be able to get a permission to start a company in Dubai. While when they do it BVI, nobody will ask them for this permission, right? Uh, ex exactly. Eventually, if you want to work in Dubai, you have to abide by the by the commercial uh, uh, regulations over here. And uh, mostly in order to do any other job, than the job that uh, you have uh, you you've uh, you've been uh, uh, like uh, recruited for you need a permission from the uh, from the, the 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 owner of that uh, business and those permission sometimes is guaranteed sometimes is not guaranteed uh, the, the 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 BVI options at least at this point of time will uh, will guarantee the rights of everybody then uh, will have a legal structure that people can rely on. Uh, in order to to start developing this business, if the business uh, is, uh, is 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 moved forward and reach a commercialization stage, then here you can have a subsidiary company or you can have uh, uh, any other legal forms because here you would have uh, uh, you you would have identified uh, uh, your direction in a proper manner and you are willing to spend time, paperwork and whatever. So, so how the, the process starts if we start from the beginning? The first mm -hmm. step is to own co like to start a company in BVI through a law firm in Dubai, right? It's not necessarily through a law firm from in Dubai. Like myself, uh, I, I did the seashell before. I like the guys who I did the seashell uh, basically online. They've been uh, very, very, very good guys. And uh, within two, three days, they send you the incorporation certificate, everything. And then once you attest those uh, uh, those uh, certificates, uh, you can uh, um, you can use them uh, for contracts and cost? all this stuff. Uh, the, the, the range is about hundred thousand five hundred dollar to two thousand dollars uh, bearing corporation but again what you might need the lo the legal firm uh, for in here is to draft uh, customization for your contract you know your term sheet your memorandum of association and all this stuff you would need uh, somebody who can do this if you don't have the internal resources then you would have to go to uh, to uh, a legal firm which uh, they charge you eventually more so you it costs 1500 to 2000 dollars to uh, to incorpor incorporate the company in seashell or bvi or these islands and then how much it costs you per year uh, the annual renewal is about $400, 400 $450. But that's again, as I tell you, it will be a special purpose vehicle. So it will be like a, a holding company. 
in which it will manage the finance, it will manage the shares of the of the, of the shareholders and all this stuff. Uh, eventually, you need to have the right legal setup in every country that you operate uh, on, especially if you are operating like physical goods and invoicing and all this stuff. Uh, but there, uh, in terms of the investors, if you have international investors, they all of them they know what is BVI. And then so, you put the company, the local company, under the holding company, the BVI company? Uh, yes, uh, that will be the holding company, it will be under BVI. Yeah. So here in the license in Dubai, let's say, as an example, it will be mentioned that this is part of the B. this is what you have done now here in the... It could, yeah. A BVI company can own a local company over here, yeah. Uh, in, in many of the uh, many of the free zones uh, in here, the specific legal structure. Uh, of course, there is some due diligence to be done. The company has to reach a specific maturity, you know, uh, in terms of uh, um, uh, certificate of uh, good standing and all this stuff, but yeah, uh, this is how most of the uh, of the big companies they're structured, you know, multinationals and stuff like and that. And in case the company locally goes, let's say, bankrupt, they will go after the the main company, or it's like kind of limited liability. It depends on the form of uh, of incorporation over here. If it's a limited liability, then it's, uh, it is. Mm -hmm. uh, if it's a sole proprietorship or so, then it will extend to your uh, to your personal uh, asset as well. To add an investor for for the BVI company, uh, how easy is that? Like you just send the paper, you sign it, or you have to be present in in, in certain office here to sign. How it works? Okay, basically we provide uh, you provide a subscription uh, a subscription and sale purchase agreement for shares for the investors, and then it goes through the negotiation. You know, add this, remove this, and all this stuff because there are different type of references, different type of shares types, and and all this. So here, if you agree on the structure, you get the stuff signed in, and then probably you'll have clauses like only the share certificates will be issued uh, after the money is being. Uh, uh, it's been or already uh, deposited to to the company account. Uh, so the whole structure makes it uh, more comfortable uh, for both parties, whether the entrepreneur as well as the investors. You founded so many and co-founded so many different startups. Uh, what are the main challenges that you usually face? The same main challenges that you face over and over again, and you you think that it's the most difficult part of any startup. I think I think the the early uh, the investment at early stage uh, company, especially ideas, you know, uh, this is where we uh, where we we fall in behind, uh, or or I think there's a there's a, there's a big room for improvement uh, over here, because um, uh, again, uh, uh, if if every investor need a company with a balance sheet and a performance and all this stuff, then uh, there won't be a chance for those. Uh, for those early stage companies to thrive. So uh, this is the main uh, issue is access to capital in uh, in early stage. So basically, uh, I think it's easier here to raise one or two million dollars than to raise a hundred thousand or fifty thousand dollars because uh, the risk is high. Uh, but we see right now this has been changed a great deal. Uh, uh, most of the people uh, in the region here have the real estate mentality, so they wanted to see what they have uh, paid for. And for for digital business or online businesses, uh, it's uh, somehow very hard to quantify you know, uh, what is the value of this business or, or how it could be valuable. Uh, so this is a major question over here. Uh, the second thing is the main challenge is the cost of living, you know, because uh, the cost of living is pretty high. Then hiring, you know, teams uh, in order to develop your uh, uh, to develop your startup and all might be a bit challenging at the beginning. Uh, you need to convince people to 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 work at uh, at lower salary. You could give them a stock options or whatever. Uh, this is another challenge. Uh, the whole ecosystem is developing right now. Uh, we see now the bits and pieces are getting together. Uh, but I think uh, those are the two main issues, two main challenges. What do you advise the new startups in Dubai? From where to start, what to do? They should go to incubator or what they should do? 
Well, look, first, uh, uh, first, before going to incubator, I think reflecting their ideas to friends and families and see w- w- would they buy this uh, product, would they find value in this product. This is very important uh, elements before even pushing it forward. Because uh, one thing we, 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 we see most of the time is that many people are very much in love with their ideas. They could be the only customers for those uh, products or services. You know? But uh, also the family and friends the same. And also there is another different hassle with the family of friends. Like sometimes it will, or most of the time, will affect the, the relationship that you have with them in case that they are, there is business involved. What do you think? Yeah, but for being an entrepreneur, you have to be open-minded a bit. You you don't have to be very much in love with your idea. So if somebody tell you that, no, this is not going to work, they're not going to cut your relation with him. You know, you have to be open for criticism. You have to be open for uh, for the other uh, the other uh, point of view because uh, these are valuable inputs. Uh, eventually, you are planning to put a product to a market. So you, you, you have to figure out whether this market will be uh, liking your product or, uh, or no. And the half friend of uh, friends and family will be the, 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 the use case group, you know, in which you can get uh, feedback. feedback. Yeah, the second thing, the second advice will be like uh, entrepreneurship is difficult. Like many of the entrepreneurs, they think that, okay, uh, I'll be an entrepreneur after a year or two, I'm driving Maserati, you know, I'm staying in, uh, in the pub and stuff like that. Uh, it takes some, uh, some good time, effort and consistency uh, to reach a good milestone. Uh, this, is, uh, this is very important. Otherwise, it will be easy. Everybody will be a millionaire, you know. Uh, and all, uh, you have to uh, you have to be very consistent. You have to be strong emotionally. You have to be strong, uh, and then uh, also you, you you should never give up. How to find the right uh, co-founder in Dubai? Well, basically, the co-founder uh, should be somebody whom you know at least, or you did a business with, or you traveled with at least, because uh, during the course of a business. You know, uh, there, there's so many challenges that you would really need to know the, 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 the personality of the person uh, that, uh, uh, that is uh, coming with you as a co-founder in advance uh, before getting into there. You see, okay, he's a geek. Give up us, you know. He's uh, uh, he 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 get negative when he's frustrated, you know. He's uh, uh, he's very hard working. He doesn't uh, he's lazy, you know, stuff like that. So I think uh, um, uh, starting a business with somebody uh, you know for a while you did a business with or or you travel with or you study with uh, works better than having uh, somebody you just interview and you, you start a business with share with us some of the softwares or tools that you use that makes you more efficient okay basically I uh, in, in, in terms of uh, uh, in terms of uh, business planning I use business plan pro which uh, in which I could uh, uh, I could have a quick uh, uh, overview of whether uh, this is going to work financially or not. Uh, we use uh, we use PowerPoint a lot to do presentations and stuff like that, and uh, and I use also Visio uh, for for modeling and stuff like that. What what the name of it? Microsoft Visio. Visio. Okay. Yeah. And uh, how can you take us through your uh, life and work uh, routine, like since you wake up in the morning till you sleep? What do you do? Okay, okay, <laughs> okay. We we do a lot of work uh, daily. Uh, so the average um, working hours is fifteen to eighteen, sometimes to twenty hours a day. Wow. Uh, I make sure that to spend the first start uh, the day by spending time with my daughters. And, uh, and family, so I insisted of taking them to school uh, every day. Uh, so at least I will capture this morning hour to see what uh, what uh, what they uh, what are the issues, you know, you what's up with them, driving. their stuff, and all this stuff. Yeah, uh, it's been a quality time, and it's also give you a post in the morning, you know, uh, after you wake up, pray, you know, do some sport and all this stuff. Take them to school, and then after that, I head to 
uh, I had to work. Uh, if uh, if uh, if I do not have meetings and stuff like that, I try to avoid traffic in the morning so I can I can grab a couple of hours, you know, uh, instead of wasting them on the road. Uh, if I have meeting, then I move on the road. So I try to avoid moving too much uh, on the road in the morning. Uh, so basically till lunchtime, um, till uh, six or seven uh, in the evening, uh, I go back home. I spend also another hour with my kids. And then normally uh, after they sleep at seven, then I have from like eight till 11 or 12, uh, I guess uh, do some, you know, uh, some planning, some, you know, just recabbing on the day. This is how it goes normally. Now you are based basis. where in the crib or in, in the weekend? Five? Yeah, we based on the crib. We also we also utilize in five. You know, some uh, some of the times, uh, but we but we mainly have the crib here. Uh, uh, so uh, uh, it's uh, it's like uh, this is a daily uh, daily routine. Uh, over the weekend, uh, it tends to be more fun. Sometimes we like to go uh, dune batching, you know, just to relieve stress. Uh, so we, we go for safari or do dune batching and stuff like that. I like to do a lot of outdoor activities uh, over the weekend, you know. Any other hobbies? Uh, apart from dune batching, we do a bit of uh, uh, swimming. I do shooting also. These are the main hobbies, yeah. Top three They're mentors. Stress busters. <laughs> yeah. What, who uh, are uh, your top three mentors? Yes, top three mentors. The main mentor I think I learned a lot from. Uh, he's uh, he's a CEO and uh, and, and uh, of Emirates Investment Group. Uh, he's the guy whom uh, I work with even around ten years or twelve years. And uh, uh, seeing him building something from scratch up to eight billion dollar, uh, eight billion uh, dirham company, uh, uh, that's uh, taught me a lot. One of the main uh, objective of getting into that advisory role is, uh, is is learning. You know, we learn so many things. Uh, even the offshore and BVI and all this stuff. These are some of the stuff that we learn uh, in in real time uh, for from uh, from them. Uh, then uh, we look at uh, uh, we 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 have a couple of good mentors over here. We have Ronaldo Mishohar, He's been a great mentor to us. Uh, we've got uh, Fadi Andur. He's been great mentor to us. Uh, so the, these are the guys who really benefit from a very small time with them. Uh, top three factors for success in uh, three words. Yeah, I think uh, you have to be strong. You have to work hard, and you have to be consistent. What's the uh, biggest failure moment in your life? I think the biggest failure moment was when we folded this Formula One spot. Okay. It was a very bitter decision, but uh, there was no way out again. It, it was the the most a company that made you most of your money. And most of the money, what? most of the contacts, the that level, and all this stuff. I mean, I mean, uh, it was an outstanding experience, you know. Top three apps that you use on your iPhone or like smartphone. Okay, top three apps I use uh, Kayak a lot for traveling and booking and all this stuff. I use uh, expense uh, app. Uh, regularly to uh, to just uh, be on top of my expense. It co- it's called I expense it, I expense it, and uh, I use the the camera a lot. <laughs> okay. For tweeting and all this stuff. Yeah. You like Twitter or Facebook more, and why? I like Twitter more. Why? I like Twitter more because you get the whole update, especially what is going on and all this stuff. Uh, it's more uh, more professional, you know, in terms of the business here. Yeah. What are the habits that you're trying to develop to stay efficient? Okay, uh, you need to give some time for yourself. Sometimes, as an entrepreneur, you are overworked, so you need to pay yourself uh, some time. Uh, this is very important. Uh, it's difficult to sneak out this time and just uh, do it for yourself. Uh, the second thing is uh, the nothing box thing. You know, uh, you have to have this one hour uh, daily 
uh, to think of uh, of nothing. Uh, it give you a boost into starting the the next day, and uh, the other. When uh, usually that, you do that hour? I do it normally before I sleep. Okay. And uh, if I don't do it, I can't sleep. So, so how you do it? Like you lay on the bed or uh, just you sit on, yeah, on the sofa? I just sofa? Put, the, put a bit dim of dim light. Uh, I sit on the sofa, and sometimes there's some business channel in the TV. You know, I don't, I don't, I don't look at the uh, the news and all this stuff. But uh, it, it's it's the way uh, it creates the environment for me. And the third thing is that to have a checklist, you know, of what what is being done on uh, on the day, and what is uh, what to be done tomorrow. You know, uh, this is very important. Sometimes we get out of the truck, you know, you don't do it, then you get everything messed up. But again, uh, it will be a real checklist, a, a small notebook with a pen, you know, all this. So you prepare your stuff, checklist before stuff. one day. How, this is exactly. how you do it? Before one day, and then by end of the day, you see what is being done, and the rest you keep it for the next day. Do you use paper or software? Uh, paper. <laughs> okay, yeah. so you just take a small them. notebook with the, yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. Um, what is the best advice that you have ever received? The best advice... Yeah. It's a bit... Uh, it just recall back. I think the best advice is to get back into entrepreneurship after the economic crisis. You know, I mean, like uh, uh, that was uh, uh, that was uh, was a like a leap of faith, you know, sort of decision. Who advised uh, you? Uh, I was advised by one friend of mine. How do you change your mood when you are depressed? Normally, I go for something that's completely uh, unrelated, like dune batching, for example, is something that's uh, get you out of anything that you can uh, you can think about you know so something that's more challenging when you will take me for exciting. that with you i'm ready next <laughs> weekend <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> what's your favorite quote favorite quote favorite quote is a quote that i've been repeating over i think the last 20 or 25 years is that man make money 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 never make a man again Man makes money. Okay. okay. Money never make a man. So as a man, you 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 keep making money, but uh, the the money sometimes does not make you the right uh, that give you all the fulfillment and all this stuff to feel good about yourself. You know? Who said that? I don't know. I just I just saw it floating somewhere, but uh, I, I I really believe on it. Top three favorite books. Top three favorite books. There's a book called Throwing uh, Sheep in the in the Boardroom. Okay. It talks about uh, the changes in, um, in, 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 in corporate life after the social media has started. And then uh, the book of dreams from, from, from my father. It's uh, about what? Barack Obama, uh, life okay. story. <laughs> And uh, the other, uh, the, there's a book about business model generation. Okay. Uh, top three people that you're inspired by? I'm inspired by, uh, first by Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It's been great inspiration for us to, uh, to be consistent, to be resilient and to, to hard work. I've been inspired by uh, Steve Jobs. I've been inspired by Reza Yafar, who's the CEO of uh, Invest Investment Group. What are the things that makes you really happy? I think having a real genuine uh, moment with uh, with uh, with my daughters or even with any kid. You know, something something really genuine, something real nice. You know, you, you really feel this is uh, this is something really uh, authentic and genuine. Yeah, so, uh, that's make me really happy. Is there is any question that uh, I didn't ask you about and you wanted to talk about? 
Well, I think we've covered everything. I mean, uh, I'll, 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 I'll just uh, give a, a last note. I mean, like, if you are an entrepreneur, uh, go for it. Uh, do it. Don't wait till it's ready. Don't wait it till it's perfect. Uh, try to try to bounce it to a specific group of people. See what they are views about it. Uh, if you feel it's going forward, uh, be consistent. Don't give up, and eventually you reach somewhere. How people can contact you? Last question. Okay, I could be fine at Twitter, Walid Al Bashir, uh, at Twitter. Uh, I could be fine as at Link, LinkedIn as well. Those are the the most easiest way to contact. Thank you so much, Walid, for this uh, great interview. Thank you, thank you very much, Ahmad. Thanks, thank everyone. You. Be efficient and stay efficient, and see you soon with another leading expert. <laughs>